calling from a 308 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hello. Hello. This is Kowalski from Nebraska. Kowalski from Nebraska. What's happening in Kowals in, in Nebraska? <laughs> Uh, well, COVID cases are at the second worst they've been all year. So, uh, actually, that was partially what I wanted to talk about. So, I recently talked to one of the county commissioners in the area. He is a lifelong Republican, not a big fan of BLM or uh, same-sex marriage or anything like that. But he does really, really detest our governor for not taking COVID seriously. So... I would say there's a mixed bag of people out here. Interesting. All right, fair yeah. enough. What else you got? And I also, um, I also just wanted to uh, make a comment on the person yesterday who was talking about uh, my view on the electoral college. I would also agree that, uh, yeah, the whole uh, awarding the popular vote that uh, state compact thing would be great. But I also think it wouldn't work because just a handful of states get back out whenever and there'd be no negative repercussions. So until you actually have a plurality of the states willing to get rid of the Electoral College, I think your better bet is just focus on winning over smaller states to get a greater electoral uh, impact. Well, um, I, I think you can chew gum and uh, walk at the same time, but uh, good point. Appreciate the call. Hold on. Before I go, there's one last thing I would like to say. I disavow radical evangelicals. All right. This we... is a weird political statement I need to make because people want everyone to disavow radical Islam. So, since radical evangelicals are the most dangerous people in North America, I disavow. There we go. So noted. We'll have a good day. Appreciate that. A lot of people have been waiting for that, uh, Kowalski. <laughs> Appreciate you doing that. Calling from a 210 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Good afternoon, Sam. This is John from San Antonio. John! Two in a row. Look at How that. Are you? What's <laughs> happening, John? Yeah, President Super Spreader says he's going to be at the debate in Miami in nine days. So uh, I haven't heard any uh, mail-in voting disinformation since the uh, president super spreader got COVID, but that'll probably change soon. So most political analysts think that the one-two punch of president super spreader rude behavior at the debate and his reckless disregard for taking precautions in the middle of a pandemic will put president super spreader in a deep hole that will make it extremely hard uh, for him to recover from. So I was just wondering, uh, you were you were talking about some of the numbers. Uh, what, what what numbers were you referring to? What what uh, what is your source for these numbers? Which numbers are you talking about? Well, you're talking about state. Uh, I got state a polls. Uh, uh, Reuters Ipsos Reuters. poll. Uh, oh, okay, so you're basing it on one poll. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, Sam, I come on. <laughs> no, I know you need a rolling. I know you need a rolling average. I was just announcing new polls that came out. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, they they uh, they are they're basically always use uh, uh, you know internet polls, and so they they always have a tendency to to uh, go towards the cult of Trump or you know, Republican Party or whatever you prefer. So uh, so you know. Uh, boomer voters, you know, can change their minds very quickly, and we saw that in the 2016 uh, Clinton-Trump election, and in this year's uh, Democratic primaries after uh, Bernie uh, won in Nevada. Uh, so, you know, s s President Super Spreader Pass is about the same as I called in two weeks ago, which is uh, hold Arizona, uh, where Biden's up by 4.1. Hold Florida, where Biden's up by 2.7. Hold North Carolina, where Biden's up by 1.3. And uh, and hold uh, Pennsylvania, where Biden's up by 6.3. So, uh, you know, and he also has to win, uh, where his uh, margins were relatively high in 2016, uh, like Georgia, where Biden's up by 1.1. Ohio, where uh, Trump's up by 0 0.3. Uh, Iowa, where Trump's up by 0 0.5, and Texas, where he's up by 2.3. So uh, so it, there would have to be a larger polling area than there was in the 2016 election. Uh, but so giving you know, President Super Spreader about a 20% chance to win is, is about right, so in my opinion. 
So uh, Democrats are definitely doing better in Senate races recently. Uh, Nate Silver put up his model, and I can easily find flaws with it within a matter of minutes. The Senate model that gave uh, the cult of Trump uh, super spreaders way too cr- too much credit. Uh, the fundamentals are changing in red states, and he's overemphasizing incumbency. So the initial Senate model gave the Democrats a 58 percent chance of, of them winning. Uh, the Senate, while I gave him initially a 67 percent, now he's up to 63, and I'm up to 73. So most of the Democratic candidates are very conservative, and we've spoken about this over the past year and a half. And I hope most of them get primaried in 2026. But for now, you know, let's vote for the candidates. We'll still the least amount of damage. So, I mean, with Democrats, you got Mark Kelly up by 8.6 in Arizona, Hickenlooper up by 7 points in Colorado, Cal Cunningham up by 5.6 in North Carolina, Sarah Gideon up by 5 points in Maine. And that's the tipping point race if Biden wins. And I'm already acknowledging a Doug Jones loss in Alabama. So the biggest change in any senatorial race uh, in the last few weeks concerns the Georgia special election where Democrat uh, Reverend uh, Raphael Warnock has surged to the top. Well, while Warnock does not support Medicare for all and the Green deal, New Deal, Bernie Sanders did endorse him. So he's afraid of uh, – he's ahead of uh, Colt of Trump accolades, uh, Kelly Loeffler and Doug Collins. There were 21 people running in the race. What about uh, Lieberman? No, uh, he's 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 far down. I mean, Warnock has all the momentum going Good. with him. Good. So I mean, but yeah, he's, he's got to get over fifty, right, to avoid a runoff. Ah, uh, no, he's not going to do that. He's at twenty six point two. So there's going to be another uh, election on the fifth uh, of January. So it's yeah, Loeffler's at twenty four, and Collins is at twenty point eight. So, so there's one potential. Uh, there's only one potential uh, runoff poll between Warnock and Loeffler. Like I said, I think it's on the uh, on a January 5th, and uh, Warnock was up by 10 points in that poll. Wow. So, wow. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So you played a good clip of the WNBA Atlanta Dream players, you know, war- uh, wearing uh, Warnock for Senate T-shirts uh, a while back, and uh, about a. I think it was an early – anyway, uh, so Loeffler, you know – Are you suggesting, all... John, that my playing that clip uh, in some way broke this whole race open for Warner? Uh, yeah, and I think uh, I think Georgia is has been trending more towards Democrats than any other state in the last month, both in the presidential election and in the Senate races. So, I mean, it didn't didn't hurt. But, yeah, I mean, she made all these disparaging remarks about, you know, Black Lives Matter, the the movement, you know, in in early July, you know, after the protest. And so that's when all that started. And so so that was just the reaction to uh, Loeffler's initial reaction. Right. So also. So in, in Iowa, Teresa Greenfield's up by 3.7 over uh, Joni Ernst. Uh, in 2016, uh, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham said, uh, if, uh, if you were tra- referring to the Republican Party nominee, Trump, we will get destroyed and we will dis- deserve it. In 2014, uh, it's a little Graham bad. In a story. I know people always say I sound like Lindsey Graham, so I mean I, I don't know. Uh, that's not a good sign. Uh, people always say that. So he said he won his senatorial race by fourteen pounds. Now he's only up by point two percent. Point two, not well. 2%, you know what they 2. just did? Uh, they made it harder for people to absentee vote in South Carolina. The yeah, Supreme I saw Court that. did. Just gave them. Uh, a, you will need to have a witness. Um, validate your absentee ballot. Now, I, I don't know if it, it, you need, um, you know, a doctor to make it clear, but like to randomly have another person around you to watch you uh, sign the ballot, eh, it just sort of adds to the difficulty, but that's what they're doing. I mean, yeah, I, I imagine that Lindsey Graham is like, that's going to, you know, when you're in a race with like 0.05% or whatever it is, um, uh, difference between you and your opponent literally every little bit helps and that that's certainly going to help well john i appreciate the update we're going to hear more from you i imagine uh in the uh coming uh weeks and of course uh we will hear from you on election day maybe multiple times all right thank you i'd I'd appreciate that thank you no i would appreciate it thank you john okay yeah all right take care okay All all right there we go 
Uh, John from San Antonio, ladies and gentlemen. 